We have our print actions page all done now in the UI, with the exception of actually defining these printer settings, which we can rotate back to. But one thing we need to do is when we're changing these settings, we need to detect when things have actually changed. So we can show the user a save or cancel button ready to commit to a backend database. What we're going to do today is figure out a way to detect when something's changing and then show the buttons only when a property has changed. Let's take a look. So the first thing we want to do is put some buttons down here. I think the bottom right corner is a good place to start. To do that, we've got the drawing section here, which is currently in column four of the main grid, which is fine. But because we want buttons to align now to the bottom corner, we're going to have to change the stack panel to a grid like we did in another part of the UI. So we'll change that to a grid. Spacing doesn't exist in grids. So what we do is do row definitions, put auto and then spacing, auto spacing, and continue that for however many times we need it. And then inside each element inside of here, we can now do grid.row is zero, and then two, four, six, eight, and carry on by adding twos. And this is replacing the stack panel now with the grid, but keeping the layout basically the same. So you can see there that looks identical now, and we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and we'll have 5 for spacing and 6 for where we want the buttons. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 items. So this last one can be a fill all. And now if we put a uh, be another stack panel, grid.row 6, let's just make the background red so you can see it. And there you go. So that's now filling all the remaining space, which is what we want. We want, however, the vertical alignment to be at the bottom where the buttons are and the horizontal alignment to be right. And we just chuck a button in here called cancel. Can we now see to the bottom right? We do. So we've got the alignment correct. We can remove that background. Uh, we'll double up the button. We'll put another one in and call this one save. And the uh, orientation wants to be horizontal, the spacing wants to be 10. And then we can style these buttons now, classes, and we do an outline for the cancel, so it's a bit more subtle, and a success, I think it's called. Yep, so a cancel and a save. And you can see how easy that was now, with all the styles made and the buttons and everything done. The UI really doesn't take long at all. And there are the buttons. I think we'll leave them large. You can see on like the settings page, most of these are small, but I think in terms of this area, this is about appropriate to full size button. Next, what we need to do is have some kind of property that lets us know each of these items, whether they are changed or not. This will come in beneficial when we commit to the database as well. So it's something we need not only for the UI, but also for the backend database. So if we go into the actions print view model, which is each item, which is where we want it. We'll need a public boolean has changed. And what we need for this really is a way to save all of the state when it's first shown or loaded, and then compare that to the current state when it's been edited. That means we're gonna to have to store some kind of setting when we define that it's been loaded in and ready to be classed as the current state. I'm gonna do that using JSON. It's not maybe the most efficient, but in terms of speed, it really doesn't matter and it keeps the code nice and clean. So what we're going to do is do a private uh, string and we'll call this one saved state. You can see all these issues as well with nullable strings. This is going to cause us an issue when we start doing JSON serialization because they're going to go from nulls to strings and match inappropriately. So what we want to do at the same time is fix this kind of default state issue by setting all properties to a default value. This is just good practice anyway. So if we just do that for all strings, give them a default value, get rid of the warning. Drawing exclusion is actually spelled wrong. Let's just fix that while we're here. And then it doesn't automatically fix the back end one. There we go. And then for this one, just to get rid of the null for now, we'll just make a new uh, class. That gives us something to compare against now, a save state. And the has changed can now compare if the save state isn't equal to. And then what we're going to do is do JSON serializer dot serialize, which will convert an object into a JSON string, which is really good for comparing. We're going to pass in ourselves. And what this is going to do is serialize 
this class with all the information into a string. The problem we're gonna get is this is a property in itself in the class. So it's gonna to attempt to serialize this, come into the serializer and go in an infinite loop. So the way we get around that is with JSON ignore, and this tells the serializer to not serialize this property and not include it in the output. We'll want to do the same thing on the save state because these are the two properties we're actually comparing. They're not part of the class to be compared to. And then we're going to need some way and some place to now set this save state to something. So if we make a public void property and call it set save state. And then here we'll just set the save state to json serialize .serialize this, which is correct. So now we're updating at this point in time, we update the save state to be the current state. After this, we also need to fire events because we'll bind to this has changed in order to show and hide the buttons. So we need to let the MVVM know that this has changed. And we do that with on property changed, name of has changed. So whenever we call this, it will at this point in time, at least update this property. So now the question becomes, at what point do we want to set the save state? If we look in the UI, I'd say when we're clicking between these, we could set the save state, or when we load in the data. So on these clicking, we have a selection, or selecting items changed here. So we could at this point update it, or we could do it at the point of loading in the properties here. So because this is a top level view model, and then we're gonna put more logic in here to handle the sub properties, I think it makes more sense to do it when we're changing items here. So we've already got some logic, but this is just detecting when the view model is a new one and selecting. So we still want this logic, but we also now want to do something if it's simply been selected. So to do that, we'll remove this selection here, this new item. So now we're, this will just match any view model. We'll put a sub if statement in here now to double check if the view model uh, is new item. And that keeps the logic identical now. Now we have identical logic. But in here now, we can run anything here when a new item or when a uh, print view is selected. And this one is when it is a newly created item so for all of them when they're selected we want to do view model dot set save state and at this point we're committing to just the view model to say remember what state it's in just before we show it and now we can compare this to the current state after it's been bound to things at the moment nothing lets this know that it's changed bar set in the initial state so the only thing that should happen is it should hide at the start Let's just bind the stack panel here, the visibility, to that property. And let's just see if the buttons correctly hide first. So there is visible binding selected print list item that has changed. And if we run that code, let's just take a look. Oh, we have a problem already. Oh, it hasn't updated that name. Exclusion. And now in here, we go to actions. You can see it's visible at the minute, but that's because we don't have anything selected. So we still need to handle this page shouldn't be visible at all when there is no selected item. We should show something like explaining maybe what a print action is and telling them to click the new button. So ignore this state, but when we select here, there we go, it's disappeared. So at least we know the has changed seems to be working. And if we wanted to see what was going on, we could click here, click away, and you can see what's gonna happen is it's gonna serialize the current state. And if we look at that, this is all it is, it's a string. So this is a JSON string. And it takes all the properties in the class and turns them into a form of a string so that you can easily store them and pass them around, typically web APIs. In this case, we can do a string compare on the serialization as a really quick way to check if things have changed. So we save the state, and then every time something triggers this, we'll compare it and reserialize the class as it stands and see if it's made any changes. At the moment, nothing triggers that has changed, so changing this does nothing. 
But let's just do, say, on the job name. Can we do the property, notify property change for name of and has changed. This will then fire the property changed every time the job name changes. And if we run that, we go into a property, we can uncheck that now because we know it's running. And if we just change the name, there we go, this reappears. And if we put this name back to what it was, you can see it disappears. So we know the binding is now working and that's what we want. And if you wanted to see that again, all you've got to do is breakpoint into here. I don't think we can really see this happening because of how it is, it's just going to be turn. So that's a bit difficult to debug, but if you wanted to, we could just expand this out into a getter and then here just do var a equals this and then return if a isn't equal to save state and now we could debug into here if we wanted so let's just run it first change a value and then we'll debug in go to actions click one and then just before we change it we can type say letter g and now what we can see is the save state if we expand out as a job name of print only drawings and the serialization of the current class if we open up as the print drawings g so this then will fail the comparison here and return that it needs to be visible so that's what's happening there it works really well and json serialization is pretty fast it just means that you have to bear in mind at the minute every time you're typing something every single letter every single change is going to fire off this serialization on a pc this isn't really a problem this is minor amounts of cpu power but it just means that if we're in here and we're typing away every single keystroke i'm doing now is firing off this if we just monitor the cpu performance and see as we're typing it doesn't even touch the cpu it, it literally has no impact whatsoever so performance wise we're fine you just have to bear in mind of what's happening in code when you're firing off this property changed event it is going to fire off a then adjacent serializer to do a comparison but that's perfectly fine for us now what we'll do is everywhere there's a property changed so the id the job name selected is not one actually so selected we don't care about if it's selected or not in the list it really doesn't change the data so that's a view property not a data property description yes drawing range exclusion list exclusion list is whitelist this string doesn't matter because it technically a getter it can't change it's reliant on this print models print drawings is new item again doesn't really matter it's either got the property or it hasn't so we don't care about that and the print profile matters as well i think that's all the properties so that should mean now every single one we change should incur the visibility of the button showing so let's just check that works yep so absolutely everything we change causes the change of button now we have a state that should be valid to allow us to then save and cancel. Cancel will want to restore properties, save will want to save to database. So we'll leave those actual actions for now, but they will be capable of then going to a database soon. I think one thing we want to do though is, this is a bit harsh, again we want some kind of animation. Now one of the things in WPF is if you were doing a bind to visible, you can't animate this. And the same is true in Avalonia. And what you'd have to do instead is go to opacity and opacity is a double value from zero to one typically and this would want to be set to an integer so this would mean in the binding we'd have to do a value converter to convert a boolean to an integer but in avalonia they've actually incorporated this by default that if you try to bind to a double and the property is a boolean it will convert it between zero and one so we don't even have to mess with that we can simply bind a boolean to an opacity and now we can animate the opacity so to do animation we just have stack panel dot styles then in here we'll have a style with a selector of stack panel and in here we can then have a setter property 
transitions, and then here we have transitions. And then inside here now we can do a double transition with a property of opacity and a delay of 0, 0, 0, 0 0.1. Well, let's do 0 0.5 first to make sure we actually see it happen. And I guess if we click in here, that's not currently working. Oh yeah, that's because it's not delay, it's duration. There we go. So now you can see it fade in and out. Put that back to 0.1. And let's just run this and check we're happy with the visual. So now if we go to here, we change something, and we can see that nicely appears. So I think that's a nice speed. And it's also a quick way to tell us now we can save or cancel. Next up, we probably want to prevent the change. So if we go to somewhere, click it, and this is visible. On selection, now we should be able to detect if has changed is currently true. That we want to cancel that selection, leave it here, and warn the user, maybe flashing these buttons down here to kind of prevent them tabbing out without selecting a button. But we'll leave that for the next video. So hopefully you guys saw a nice easy way to detect when things have changed. And this will come useful when we need to then commit to the database.